Hello and welcome to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. This podcast has evolved over the five plus years since it first launched. From now on, I'm going to be talking about deepening your connection with yourself, taking inspired action, and really trusting yourself and your intuition. And also mindset, of course, but mindset of all kinds, not just business mindset. I think. Things are changing for me, as you may have noticed if you've been following me online or listening to this podcast, so anything goes here. I hope you stay along for the ride. Thank you so much for joining us today, and now let's get into this week's episode. Hello and welcome to the Into the Woods podcast, episode 357. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm back with another episode with the fabulous Joanna Hannon. So today we are talking about... Who will you be when lockdown ends? Uh, This is a question that we have seen online, and it piqued our interest. Who will you be when lockdown ends? Who will we be when lockdown ends? And so this week, we explore this question. It kind of feels like people are starting to look ahead to the future and look ahead to what that's going to bring. And so we look at our own answers to this question, and we ask ourselves whether this is even the question we should be asking or if there are other better questions we need to consider instead. So what will you learn in this week's episode? You will learn why this isn't a parenthesis in life, which is kind of the way I was approaching it at the beginning, and I'm starting to realize that's not how I want to be looking at it. This is our life now until further notice. We talk about how to be more intentional about today and what we want to experience today and how we want to feel today and how we want to be today today in this weird time. We share some questions that you need to ask yourself to get the most out of this time and to feel the best in this time. We talk about how you can prepare for the future or not. And finally, we share the one question that you need to ask yourself again and again. And it is one question that I will be probably making a sign out of and pasting on my desk somewhere where I can see it. Um, because as you know, I wasn't feeling that great a couple weeks ago and I did some things that, uh, helped to lift me out of that. But I, I really feel like this, this lockdown has been more of a roller coaster of emotions than what I'm used to experiencing. I think I'm kind of more stable usually. And, and I think all of us, since we've had fewer distractions, we've been forced to be rather than do And we've been forced to kind of look at ourselves and how we feel and what we want out of life. So that is this week's episode. I hope you find it interesting and useful. This is a longer episode as they tend to be with Joanna, but we share a lot of reflections and experiences from our own lives that I hope will be interesting and useful to you. Hi, Joanna. Hi, Holly. I'm looking forward to our conversation today. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. So today we will be asking the question, who will you be when lockdown ends? And we'll also be asking the question, is this really the question you should be asking? So yes, I think we we chose this question uh, because we've seen it around and it's kind of intriguing. But when we actually started talking about it, we realized it's the wrong question to ask. (laughs) So we'll see where this goes. And hopefully, (laughs) um, hopefully it'll go somewhere as interesting as it did when we prepared. Exactly, exactly. So obviously, as usual, we had a pre conversation where we evaluated the topic to see if this was actually something we could talk about. We have a whole list of bullet points, and I think this is going to be interesting, and I think it is going to be useful, because most countries around the world, I think, are still in lockdown. Things are starting to shift a little bit, but not that much. So as we record this, it's the 11th of May. So in the UK, Boris just uh, gave his little update yesterday. Not much has changed. You're in Belgium. Things are starting to change. Yeah, things are. so all the stores are opening today you know, with masks and social distancing and all that, but like all the stores would be on supermarkets. Um, Primary schools, parts of primary schools are going back next week. So in theory, things are starting to open up again. Mm. I'm not going to say going back to normal because I don't think that's the case, but they're opening up again. And then I think their strategy is just to kind of open up and then see how high the numbers will spike again. And yeah. Right. So there is a chance, of course, if 
Ill- the number of people contracting the illness spike, you're going to go back to lockdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. and that's what's happening in Germany. So Germany yeah. has opened up and the numbers have spiked yeah. again. Yeah, I saw um, that. So they haven't, they haven't closed it back down again, but I guess they have to see. I mean, the problem is always not the numbers themselves, but how many people the hospitals can take in, right? Exactly. So they have to make sure. Yeah. So, so we'll see. They, they've made it very clear in Belgium that these are the phases and they've given us these tentative dates mm. for when certain things are opening. Uh, but it's very, very clear that, that we may have to go back a phase yeah. mm-hmm. before taking another step forward. So, yeah. um, so we, we'll see. Yeah. So, yeah. So who will we be when lockdown <laughs> ends? <laughs> Holly, what do you think about this question? Like what, what about this question intrigues you? Well, it intrigues me because you know, we had normal life for many years, <laughs> whatever that means. And now we're in this weird in-between zone. And then lockdown is going to kind of gradually end. Obviously, it's not going to be like one day everything changes. It's going to be kind of gradually stepping out. And then there's going to be a new thing afterwards, which we don't even know what that looks like. And we don't even know how much longer this period is going to go on for so it's I don't know I feel like things kind of started to shift about a week or two ago and I started thinking more about what things are going to be like in the future what things I want to do but a lot of that to be honest has been like looking at my goals for this year and looking at the things that I haven't been able to do and thinking oh well when can I defer these things to yeah I haven't really gotten to the point where I'm like what is this new exciting world going to bring to me? I, you know, I, mm. it's like, I can't even, we can't, well, I personally can't even conceptualize what things are going to be like once we start oh, no. coming out. And I, I think, think that's normal. Yeah. I think anybody who's really sure is lying yeah. either to themselves, you yeah. know, or, or to others so consciously or, or unconsciously. Um, but we can't know because yeah. like, we're in one of these, like I've heard this uh, said a couple of times, you know, I, we're in the, one of those historical shifts. Yeah. Um, I say to my son, you know, that in the future, like his kids yeah. are going to be studying this period in yeah. history yeah. Um, and he's going to be able to, to tell them what it was like, what it was actually like yeah. um, for the whole world to shut down for this long. And that's huge. Which, when you think about like, what major historical shifts have happened in our lifetime? The only thing I can think of is the Berlin Wall coming down in 89 and like the whole Eastern part of Europe, like opening up, like that was massively huge, but like there haven't been many things like that. Huge life-changing world changing world changing. And I think that's, that's the thing. Well, I mean, there have been, but they haven't been as kind of, one moment in time as yeah. the Berlin Wall. Yeah. I mean, I know the, it's not actually one moment in time, yeah. but you know, like you remember like an event. Yeah, you remember the wall coming down on the news and, and like people like breaking the thing up and taking yeah. chunks of it. And yeah. like that, that was, it was huge. Right. But like, for example, the Industrial Revolution. Yeah, but that didn't that was, in our lifetimes. No, but yeah. in general, in yeah, history, yeah. like living through that. Yeah must have been similar like yeah. everything was changing so quickly yeah. i mean i'm sure like i think usually we don't pause in the middle of it and yeah. you know and be like oh this is a historic moment <laughs> <laughs> you know unless we're at something you know a specific event like the, the berlin wall falling yeah. this is a significant yeah. event because things are changing and so when you think about significant events like world war ii mm. right or any war Mm. Like there's a before and there's an after. Mm. So the world looks a certain way before and it looks a certain way after. And there's certain things that you can't predict will happen. You know, yeah. when, when we talk about World War One, and World War Two, like there were countries that were formed or disappeared yeah. you know, from before to after. Yeah. Like there are things that we can't really, yeah, predict. But what I think is interesting is like, this is such a good example because with wars, you have the before and after. And in the meantime, there's like chaos because everyone's killing them, you know, each other. But this is kind of the exact opposite. We've got a before and after. And in the middle, we've got this, like, pause. Well, see, this, okay, so this is, this is where I disagree with the question. Yeah. I had this kind of epiphany (laughs) (laughs) the other day where I was like, you know, 
we're all approaching this the wrong way. Not mm-hmm. all. Perhaps yeah. you're not, dear listener. <laughs> I have been approaching yeah. it. What I now feel is is from kind of the wrong direction. Because what if it's not a pause? Mm. Right. So it's true. I mean, a war, I think, is a bad example because like eventually it'll end. Like, yeah. you know, the worst case scenario, like everybody will kill everybody else and like the whole thing will end. Right. Yeah. But a war is a is a finite thing. Eventually yeah. it'll, it'll end. Whereas this situation is not necessarily a finite thing. This isn't coming from like scare mongering or yeah, yeah, yeah. anything like that. It's just. Like it's a it's a health thing. Like there yeah. will always be viruses. There will always be health situations. This thing is mutating, and all like we don't actually know how long it's going to last. And I thought to myself, I need to stop thinking about this as a pause. Mm-hmm. Stop thinking about it as a parenthesis. Yeah, and start really understanding for myself that this is my life now. Yeah, and to really just sink into it, you know, to stop just filling time. Yeah. Until something starts again. Yeah. Because I think like that was the natural reaction of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> but it's their mind too. I mean, the first thing I did, honestly, um, and perfectly, you know, I think understandably was order like loads, a whole giant order of board games from Amazon. <laughs> That's the first thing I did. Like, <laughs> I was just like, okay, tomorrow I'll go to the store and get more food. Today, I'm going to order these games that they arrive before it all totally locks down, (laughs) you know, like as if expecting that for the next, I don't know how long we're going to be sitting around the kitchen table playing games. Yeah. Like as a giant weekend. Yeah. And I think for the first, you know, for the first bit of time, that's how people approached it. But Mm. of course, the longer it goes, the longer, okay, you know, work got itself organized and we started having online things and Mm -hmm. I was like well actually like my business is online like I don't actually need to stop anything (laughs) you know like um like how can I support people through this and school got itself organized and you know eventually after a couple of weeks started having online classes so eventually people were like we can't just pause forever like we're gonna have to start up again right but I think like a lot of the way we're approaching it is like like, this is an episode that has almost, like, nothing to do with anything else. Yeah. Like, in between. It's and what if it's not? Yeah. What if this is your life now? Yeah. And I'm not saying that things won't open up or whatever, but the world is changing. Mm. And it might change into something that's closer to what we have today mm. than to what we had before this started. Yeah. Yeah. I really approached it as kind of a a break in the beginning went away for those two weeks I went camping I went walking and when I came back I was like well I just walked 150 miles in two weeks so now I'm going to take a break and I thought well I'm going to take a break from fitness for a while and I'm just going to recover because my legs were like falling off and and for I'm talking about this from a fitness perspective and then I just kind of chilled and chilled and then started going on walks. But like I wasn't doing any of the more intense fitness that I was used to doing. And my kickboxing classes were all online. But honestly, my house is so small, I don't have space to like kick things. So I haven't been doing the online classes. And as weeks go by, like I'm realizing the longer we're in this period, if and when we ever go back to normal classes, like I'm going to be terribly out of shape. And so I've started running, but that's not good enough. Like if I want to, like I've never been this out of shape in the last like 15 at least years of my life, maybe 20 years of my life. And that scares me because I'm getting older and I want to stay in shape. And it's like, I've allowed myself to kind of I mean, I'm not totally out of shape. Like I move almost every day and I'm running again, but like, it's not, Mm. I'm not in the same level of fitness that I was before we went into lockdown. And so that has been kind of one of my wake up calls where I'm realizing, shit, I need to find a new way of staying fit. Yeah. And also preparing for whenever we come out of this, because if we do go back to kickboxing, which I do want to do, like, I don't want to be starting from scratch in terms of fitness. Yeah, I think like there's just this element of of external versus internal, yeah. right? Yeah. And we've allowed ourselves to like have the external dictate mm. our lives and what you know what we want our lives uh, to feel like and look like. And so in a way we're just 
yeah, waiting for something external to happen so we so we can get fit again. Yeah. Whereas now I'm finding I have to be so much more self-motivated because I don't have a class to go to. I don't have that structure. I have to create the structure myself. And I'm not so good about that because I've always been like, for me, fitness has always been like, yes, there was a time in my life when I was really into running, but like I would go to the gym or I would go to kickboxing or I would do something external that gave me the structure to stay fit. Whereas now... I've really got to rely on myself to create that structure. Yeah. And so it becomes really, really clear, mm. like whether you actually want it or not. Right. Yeah. Like, you I, know, yeah. but I mean, I don't know in, in your particular example, but in some, you know, for, for some people it might be, yeah, I love being fit and I love yeah. kickboxing and I love sport. And so I will make myself do it. Yeah. Or I will choose to do it. And for other people, it might be like, Oh, actually like without this external pressure, to look good or mm. to be a certain way or whatever. I'm not saying that's your case, yeah. but for some people it might yeah. be, you know, maybe I'll just let that go because yeah. it actually doesn't fit into my life anymore. Oh, like maybe yeah. it's not something that I want to do. Yeah. For me, it's, I, I really enjoy being fit. I really do not enjoy how my body feels now. And I realize how important it is to me and I can't continue to put it off. You know, that's that's one yeah. way, but maybe there's something else that yeah. you've stopped doing that maybe you won't want to start doing again. So yeah. that's, you know, we'll go into kind of the lessons of lockdown in a minute. But I think just one more, one more minute about this yeah, yeah. deferring yeah. your life until something starts up again. Yeah. So I think like, I think it's an interesting way to look at it. Like what would change? What would you change if you stopped looking at it as a parenthesis? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, how does that change your view of this? And it it doesn't matter whether lockdown will finish or not finish or how what things will look like, like those external things. Let's just, you know, we can talk about that, but it, it's it's kind of senseless because none yeah. of us really know. And it's not about being positive or negative or controlled by the government or whatever, or controlled by the aliens. Like, it's not about any of that. <laughs> it's literally about your life. Right. And your commitment yeah. to what you want your life to be yeah. or what you can choose for yourself within yeah. your current constraints, right? Because we don't know what constraints will continue and what the other constraints will be. Mm. And, and so it's just this idea of not deferring your happiness, yeah. which is something that I talk about a lot because that's part of being soul smart is being in the moment mm -hmm. and enjoying your journey towards whatever it is that you want to bring in rather than suffering now so that yeah. you can get bored at the end of it. Well, I think this is really important. And this is something that you said when we were preparing the conversation to get recording, you said it's like everyone in normal life. And I say that with air quotes, going to work every day, waiting for retirement so that they can be happy. Now, a lot of us are sitting at home and waiting for lockdown to end so we can be happy. But, yeah. but it's, it's, the same, it's the same thing. thing. Like, like we need hey, to be happy yeah. now. We need yeah. to be or enjoying like, this period yes. now. Yeah. Well, enjoying or because I, I understand that for for yeah. you know there there are a whole lot of people for whom enjoying this period yeah. is not possible. Yeah. But then at least thinking about how you would structure your life. Yeah. Right? And what how do you, you want when we come out of this? Because you yeah. can prepare for that as well. Go ahead. Not deferring your life. Yeah. I mean, it's not just deferring your happiness. It's just deferring your life, yeah. right? Like it's the same as. It's anything where where there's this concept of going through something and sacrificing um, how you feel now or doing something you don't want to do in order for something better, you know, in order to yeah. to experience something better later. Like, you know, doing a job you hate yeah. so that you can afford to go on a nice vacation. Yeah. And then what happens when you go on vacation and the hotel sucks? Yeah. Yeah, oh, well, oh, you're gonna be mad. <laughs> and having owned a hospitality company for ten years, I can tell you a lot. That used to happen a lot, especially during the holidays. Like you would see people, you've, they've saved up money. They've got, especially Americans that don't get a lot of vacation. They get their one week or two weeks of vacation. It has to be perfect. They have these ridiculously high expectations for this one or two weeks of holiday. And then when things go wrong, they would just go ballistic. Yeah. And I remember this for the longest time, we had this uh, woman who would handle reservations for us. And she and I would talk about how what would really be useful would be to have like an in-house psychologist. 
or psychiatrist come during the holiday season to provide counseling and support for these people. Because it was like, especially during Christmas holidays, it was so out of control. And we never, unfortunately, managed to get an in-house psychologist. <laughs> but like... Yeah. But how how crazy that that's a conversation that you actually had. Yeah. And we would have that every year. I would be like, if we could just like, you know, maybe set aside a room and offer like, you know, some some psychologist or mental health care professional, like a week free lodging just to take care of these people. Yeah. Because people like they had such high expectations. Yeah. So so I think that's a really important thing to think about as well. Like yeah. Yeah. Oh, like it just, just this deferring concept. Cause yeah. and, and it's not only to do with vacations and work and all yeah. this stuff. You know, the same thing happens for, for people who are very unhappy with their bodies and want to lose weight. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So deferring like, okay, when, when I lose weight, I will allow myself to buy nice clothes. Yeah. But what if you lose your job between now and then, yeah. then you can't afford nice clothes yeah. anymore. Like, or, you know, just this like, what, what if like, you know, in the, when I lose weight, then I'll be happy. Yeah. But what happens when, if you aren't? Yeah. Like, then that's a big problem because, yeah. like, your whole life has been constructed yeah. on this assumption that well, once I... a certain thing happens, yeah. then you'll be happy. Yeah. Then you'll be living the life you want. And so you've put in a whole load of, you know, sacrificed yeah. time. And then it doesn't pan out the way you expected it to. And that's a huge life disappointment. It is. So I think one of the questions that you asked when we were putting together the notes for this was, what if we stopped looking at this as a parenthesis, but what if this lockdown or this weird period lasts one year? What if it lasts two years? What if it lasts longer? Like, what do you want this period to look like? Like, yes, we can plan for the future, but we don't know what the future is going to be. Like, what do you want this period to look like? And what's going to make you happy now? Or what's going to make your life better now? Like, what things can you do to improve this phase of your life? Yeah, so that's that's a really, really important question. Um, and I think two years is a really good time period to play with. Um, you know, I have my reasons for why I think that's a good time period to play with. But I think it's just long enough yeah. to, um, to like, make sure that you're not treating this time as a parenthesis, as, yeah. a, as a break. Like, a two-year break in your life yeah. is different than, a, like, a two-week lockdown, right? Yeah, yeah. So if, it's, if it does last two years, right? So how then... How do you want it to change you? It's almost like taking yourself to the future and looking back, right? And how do you want to look back on this time? Like, I, I did this with myself, actually, um, in terms of my son and his schooling. And in general, like our time together at home, he's, yeah. he's 10. And it just really struck me, like, I when he looks back on this time, I was just very conscious that I wanted him to remember it as like, okay, maybe a bit boring, but like, <laughs> but like a nice time where we enjoyed ourselves and did things together. And there was time for hugs and yeah. all that sort of thing. I did not want him to look back on this and like, remember me yelling at him about his math homework all the time. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of that, like when you look back on this time, do you want to remember like you being frustrated by the situation mm. or do you want it? I would want to say like that this was a key moment in my life. And mm. I, I really took advantage to learn to approach things in a different, calmer, more fulfilling way. Mm. That's what I would love from this, like that I would look at back at this as a real positive. Yeah. 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 Not as a frustrating, horrible, awful period, but as a positive. Yeah. And as you're saying that, I'm conscious that like a lot of people have really been struggling emotionally and mentally with this time. So, and I had like kind of a down or week last week. So like what, what can people do if they're struggling? I mean, in addition to obviously if you can afford it, get mental health care online well, it can still be a positive. Like, I'm not saying this, you know, from from some kind of tower of joy and happiness, you know, like, <laughs> I'm, I have a normal life like everybody else. And, in fa you know, and in fact, like right before lockdown, I, I was coming out of a two month depression and anxiety stint mm -hmm. that was really, really rough. Like I had a really rough time at the start of the mm -hmm. year and I didn't quite get to get over it. Mm -hmm. I just got to a place where it was less stressful 
to go back into working and some kind of lockdown normality than it was to go to the doctor. Because I thought if I went to the doctor, I would surely die because <laughs> yeah. I, would, I would catch whatever is out there and then that would be the end of me. You know, so I didn't really have a chance to end that period before this started. Mm. So I know all about mental health issues during lockdown for sure. And I still maintain that what's really important is to do what or allow yourself to to give yourself what you need. Mm. Yeah. Right. And to be intentional about kind of this phase of your life, not as a parenthesis, but if you if you zoom out and think about it, like on the timeline of your entire life, what do you want this period to signify? Like my whole depression, anxiety, and now lockdown phase is definitely all about like just learning to like kind of just be in the moment mm. and be in my physical space, you know, and take care of things, not just kind of live in my mind and my goals and my ambitions, mm. but like have to clean the house. Yeah. Whereas, cause the cleaner isn't no longer coming. Right. And I'm not sure when I'll be comfortable to let anybody in again. Yeah. So it's about kind of being just here in the moment, mm. satisfied with what I have, mm -hmm. knowing, you know, full well that my long term or medium term plans of moving countries, well, they might not happen. They're, they certainly have to be deferred now. Yeah. And they might not happen. Mm. Like you have to, I think you have to be willing to go there mm -hmm. mentally, yeah, you know, and so how can I make sure that I still have a good life experience maybe not today because i'm crying all the time maybe not tomorrow because i have panic attacks maybe not the next day but in general this time period mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. when you like zoom out and yeah. look at this particular um, period in your life like i i want it to be positive i mean i can't yeah. imagine anybody who would consciously say I, if I had the choice, I would choose for it to be horribly negative and frustrating. And Yeah, no, but I think sometimes we get caught in a downward spiral and sure. we need to like stop and do what we can to care for ourselves and lift ourselves up out of that spiral because, you know, otherwise it's never ending. Yeah. I mean, if you're in a spiral, like I have, you know, I found certainly at the start of the year when I was going through my depression um, stint that I couldn't lift myself up. Hmm. And so I tried, and then eventually I kind of just let myself cry, mm. yeah. and I, and it lasted a lot longer than I thought it would. And I, you know, and none of my tools were working, and and the only thing I could do was just be here in the moment and yeah. kind of know that I didn't need to do anything else, like except for just be here. And if I needed to cry, then I cried, and it stopped. Hmm. It stopped eventually much mm -hmm. long you know after much longer than i thought it stopped and so that's all you sometimes that's all you can do but that's still you know it's still being in the present moment right mm -hmm. yeah and that's yeah. still giving yourself what you need <laughs> yeah exactly so since we have no idea where this is going what life is going to be like out of lockdown we can't actually prepare so like one of the things that lifted me out of my kind of funk last week was I read this really good book on um, the Pacific Crest Trail, which I've always wanted to do, but always thought I can't do it. And then something about reading this book triggered the idea that I don't have to through hike it. I can walk it in chunks. I could do like stages of it. And then, so the same woman who wrote this book has this online course and I signed up for her online course on how to walk the Pacific Crest Trail. And I did like her, her, four week online course in two days and I was so excited and like it really lifted me up because it was about like planning for the future. However, like I don't know when I'm going to be able to travel internationally to walk this trail. Could be three years from now. I don't know. But but something about that planning, that planning of doing something that I love, like lifted me out. So since we can't actually prepare, like what things can we do to prepare? <laughs> I know, yeah. I, you know what I mean? It's like life isn't going to be like this forever, I don't think. But but we don't know what it looks like. Like, am I going to be able to walk a long distance trail? Maybe, maybe not. But those are the things that I love. So how can we... Yeah, I, I mean, don't know. I, I don't even know how to ask the question because we can't prepare. But like... Well, I think like it's the same... It's the same for me. It would be the same process as what I teach hmm. 
through my soul smart work, yeah. which is to, yes, still have goals. Yeah. Yes, you're allowed to want things and desire yeah. things and, you know, but at the same time mm. also enjoy today. So, yeah. yeah, you can do your course about the Pacific Trail, but the, the only time that, that like that's not the right thing to do is if it pulls you down. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and the same for me, huh? like I still want to move to Ireland. So if exploring that or looking at house i've actually stopped looking at houses now because it, it it was pulling me down because uh, i was like i'm not one? like now now with what you know with not even being being able to travel there like the timelines are totally different yeah and so i can't be looking at houses right now mm. because it, it, then I, then i immediately go into i'm never going to be able to have this yeah that's interesting because i i did as you know um your online I don't my visioning say, quest your visioning quest was that last week or the week before yeah the week before yeah the week before. yeah whatever it was and i came up with this really lovely vision board that i really really enjoyed but it's all about like i'm looking at it as i speak to you it's all about like my ideal house and oh that's interesting yeah. oh we haven't actually talked about oh that. no let's talk about that when we get off this call <laughs> It's so pretty. It's my prettiest vision board ever. But it's it's like beautiful houses and gardens. And I found this magazine that I really, really love that's like all of my dream houses in one magazine. And eh, like when when is this going to happen? Who the hell knows? But something about looking at these pictures of other people's beautiful gardens is really lifting me up right now. So but, I think that's that, that's what you have to go on yeah. though. It's the emotion in the moment, right? Yeah, yeah. That's how you know. That's the that's your inner compass. Yeah. That's the soul talking. Like if it feels good and uplifting, yeah. do it. If it yeah. doesn't, don't do it. Yeah. And I think that's I think that's really, really key. Yeah. Like I mean, like if researching you know, there could be there could be exceptions to yeah. that, like just in case anybody's going, but in my case, et cetera, et cetera, send me your exception. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, and let's see. Yeah. In general, that's I yeah. think that's really important to remember. Yeah, you're right. Because if if researching the Pacific Crest Trail made me depressed, obviously that's something that wouldn't be good. But it's like it's really lifting me up to kind of think about these things, even though I don't have a timeline for them. Yeah. So for I'll give you an example. Like, so my parents still live in not still they're not moving. <laughs> they will always <laughs> live in Poland, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, but they live in Poland. We have a very close relationship mm. and they were supposed to come here at Easter and of course couldn't. Mm. And so we now haven't seen them since Christmas. Um, and this is really tough. It's tough on me and it's uh, tough on them. Mm. And it's really tough on my son. I needed to have a plan, mm. you know, like even though I have no idea when we'd be able to potentially yeah. go uh, because I refuse to fly for the moment until I like observe other people mm. <laughs> flying and not falling over dead. <laughs> you know, like I, I need to just have some proof that it's okay. Yeah. I would drive and that requires um, a whole set of borders to be open, yeah. various countries that we would drive through. And so it's complicated, right? Mm. Plus, like if you're going that long for that, uh, that, that distance, then you want to stay a bit longer and, you know, for our my husband's work and my, you know, there's just all sorts of things. But I needed a plan. And so we made a plan. Now, so we have a plan. We have all the things in place. We got all the permissions. We needed, you know, everything kind of that's in our control. Mm -hmm. We've done. Hmm. And the rest I have to let go of. Yeah. And I'm hoping to be able to go in July or August. And if not, I'll have to revise the plan. But I, it was important for me to have the plan because yeah. otherwise it, I, I felt really low because I was, I felt like in this, basically, what if I never get to see them again? Mm -hmm. Place, right? What if we ne what if we never get to do this? But now we have a plan that like with the limitations, <laughs> with not wanting to stay in a hotel, with not, you know, with all sorts of, so we have something. And I think that then keeps me, I don't know, like more kind of more level. Yeah. I'm not, I can't say that I'm uplifted because it's not, you know, it's not super sure and there's still a lot of uncertainty and whatever, but it's certainly better than not having a plan. Hmm. Yeah. Right. So yeah. for me, it was better to have a plan that might have to change, not have 
then then not have a plan or not bother making a plan yeah. because things are so uncertain. So, but that's very personal to me, mm. right? For you, it was better to do this course mm. and like play with the possibility mm. than not. Yeah. But you know, everybody, you know, if you're listening to this, you, you need to just go with what feels good to you. Yeah. And emotionally, not logically. So logically, that was a silly thing for Holly to do, right? Like. <laughs> Person looking at this specific thing, like you know, logically, yeah, it you know, it might not make sense to spend your time on that right now. Maybe logically, it would have been better to spend that time on something else, right? Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm not saying I believe this, but yeah, yeah, the yeah, logical, yeah, 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 it is, it is. Right? So don't think, but but it emotionally, it helped her to feel you know better, right? Yeah. So so think about that for yourself. Like, where is your soul nudging you? So what feels yeah. like there's a curiosity there. There's a spark. There's something yeah. uh, that really kind of pulls you in. And just be very aware, like, if you're talking yourself out of it, because it's not logical. Mm. It's really not logical for me to arrange everything to be able to drive to Poland in a two months' time either. Yeah. Everybody's like, mm, yeah. <laughs> no way. But I'm like, if we're allowed, then I want to have everything in place. So yeah. That makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah, exactly. That we don't have to then start thinking how to do it. I know yeah. how to do it. And, and as you makes- said, you've you've done the things that are under your control yeah. and then the things that aren't under your control, you're just going to wait and see. Exactly. But so 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 just, you know, don't follow logic here. Make sure that you're willing to do the things that feel uh, good to you. Mm. Yeah. So what has lockdown taught us or taught you specifically? I think you know, I think that's a really important question to ask yourself. I, I think that's a much more important question to ask yourself than who will I be? Yeah. Because it, it gets you to focus on the, the transformation. Yeah. So instead of thinking about it as a pause, mm. think about, about it as transformation. Mm. Like, have you been shown or or forced to look at sometimes it's a very unpleasant thing right maybe you were forced to look at your relationship and you don't really like being locked down with the person you're with right and there might be stuff coming out of that or like any anything like that like what has it taught you and and what it what is it bringing your attention to just be really really aware of that what what is it for you holly Do you know, as you're asking that question and thinking, I don't know if I've got that perspective yet. Like, what has it taught me so far? Well, like I said about the fitness, like I really need structure to stay in shape. And I'm really having to force myself to kind of get out there and go running. Uh, What else has it taught me? I don't know. I know. Right. So there's certain aspects of my work. Okay. Yes. Let's go there. Uh, there's certain aspects of the work that I do that I don't necessarily enjoy. Some things have become more difficult, but that's not just because of lockdown. It's because of certain changes that have occurred that have not been easy with the work that I do. I was actually some- going to, to not go in that direction. Okay. Holly. I was, still, I was going, actually going to say something else. And I, Cause I think what we're all being called to look at. Mm. And that's, I, I, you know, I see that. Obviously we talk a lot, Holly and I, and so I see this in, in, in you as okay. well, as I see it in myself mm. is being forced to look at being rather than doing. Uh. Cause there's much less than, than we can do. Mm. And yeah, some people just fill up that time with zoom calls and meetings and yeah. everything else and nothing changes. But we were just talking about how much we've realized both of us mm. that we enjoy relaxing and downtime Mm. and that hasn't happened in a very long time for either of us yeah but do you know what I don't know if I really have been like I've been I have read 21 books this year like (laughs) I am ahead of my my goodreads timeline for my goal like I've been reading so much and that's doing not being and like yeah some of it's been researched for my novel I just got this great book to Day, I don't know where it is that came in on Amazon that I'm really enjoying that's researched for my novel but like oh here it is but the reading depends like some of it is doing like yeah. if you're doing it as research yeah. and some of it is being yeah. if you're just reading for pleasure with yeah, no point true. to it true 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 I mean I, you know I know you know there are nuances there I understand your goodreads list I have the same thing so part of it is like a goal yeah yeah but 
but in general, like reading something for pleasure is is more being than doing. Yeah. Unless yeah. you're trying to hit your monthly target or something. No, you know? no. No, I haven't been, but I'm still like eight books ahead of my, my target for the year because um, I've been reading so much. But yeah. actually, I just thought of something that I think I've, well, I know I've already discussed with you is gratitude work. I've been doing a fair amount of gratitude work the last few weeks. And that's just because there have been certain people in my life that have been like in my face and really triggering my shit. And I feel like that's helping. Like I've, I've kind of done gratitude work sporadically over the years, but not with the consistency that I, I was for about a week or 10 days. I, it's kind of something that I want to go back to because I feel like there's still more work to be done, but that is definitely something that has kind of been brought to my attention mm -hmm. by lockdown and just the uncomfortableness that I've been yeah. experiencing. So that's, you know, that's a willingness to spend time on something yeah. that's a bit slower than like making yeah. phone calls or writing emails. Yeah. It's willingness to spend time on something internal rather than external. Yeah. Right. So it is part of a transformation. I think that's really important. So what has lockdown taught you so far and what has it brought your attention to? Well, as I said, like the lockdown didn't change so much for me because I had already been on leave from everything yeah. uh, for depression and anxiety. So I'd been home for longer, for two months longer than everybody else. Yeah. Um, which is I keep trying to remind myself of them. Like I haven't actually <laughs> done anything this year. <laughs> like, wow, well, you're still working and you're still running your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, still working. Yeah. But, but in I a mean, different way. But I have been in this house yeah. for a long uh, time. For a very long time. And so, I really feel like lockdown has given me the opportunity to kind of live life in the closer to how I want to be living it, like mm -hmm. really in the present moment mm -hmm. and to have, to make, not to have more space. Cause I, I think like my, I, I was just saying to, to you, Holly, before we started recording that I feel like everything's really busy. Cause I have all these extra yeah. tasks now <laughs> yeah. um, that I didn't have before, like, you know, cutting hair and like, all sorts of things I have to suddenly learn, <laughs> but it's still like an opportunity to do some of the things that, that I was deferring. Yeah you know, to really like be in the moment. And so it, it's really, for me, it really has been about a, a slower, gentler pace mm. and enjoying the moment. That's been really huge for me. Like I'm a huge doer and achiever. And I mean, this isn't, yeah. this isn't all lockdown related because for me, the lockdown is really, is really very closely intertwined with my mental health stuff. Yeah. So it, it you know, this process for me started earlier, mm. but it's it's really about being willing mm. to, to lead the to to kind of have the life that I want, not in terms of achievement, but in terms of like it feeling good. Yeah. And so I changed all sorts of things. Like there's certain things that I'm not willing to do in terms of my work. Mm. There's some things that I'm not willing to do in terms of my business. Mm. So I've been really like, I don't know, like I kind of let go of all the achievement stuff and goals and like you know how much money to bring in and mm. all all the kinds of things because I have I was able to do that mm -hmm. and I just kind of played with like you know what what would be fun to do in my business that's how the visioning quest came about that's the question I asked myself what would be fun to to do next you know and I had that idea and and it was a like a huge success from all sorts of aspects mm -hmm. and so I think it's that you know like I'm more willing to just have my not my life be nice but my days be yeah. nice you know so yeah. like when my son needs something I'm not like oh I'm so busy you have to do this and this go away you know I'm like nothing is really as important as just being here in the moment yeah it's like our vision is no longer kind of like this macro what do I want for my life but it's like how do I make today good which is when I've interestingly I mean what I've been teaching for years mm. that's that's you know, that's part, a huge part of, um, of manifesting the soul smart way is to pay more attention to that. Hmm. Um, and so I've been, I, I think I've just been walking my talk a lot more. Interesting. Yeah. I've really, you know why though? Because, because of my mental health, yeah. because it's like, there's something that's clearly not working for me. Yeah. The world is just not working for me. So, you know, what can I do? Well, this is what I really believe. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to do that. Like, not just, you know, on Sundays. Yeah. 
<laughs> but I'm going to do that like 100% of the time and just keep bringing myself back to what would feel good right now. And yeah. that's meant, you know. Yeah, I think that's, that's had a lot of benefits, a lot of benefits for our home yeah. life. And uh, yeah, my heart is just, I'm, I'm like getting all teary eyed. My heart's getting just so full just thinking about that because I was, you know, because I was willing to be here. Yeah. I've gotten so many benefits. Hmm. So yeah, that's yeah. A, that's certainly part of my transformation. Yeah, I and I don't think I've been because the other part of it, like, is if you think that you've learned nothing, hmm. or if nothing, yeah, if there's nothing that you're that's changing for you, or yeah. nothing that you're realizing, then I would ask you, like, what have you been ignoring, or what are you unwilling to look yeah. at? You know, what are you unwilling to look at? Because if you're, you know, it's true. If you're filling your time with Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting, mm. then you're not looking at things. You're yeah. just basically recreating old life yeah. in this new situation, right? Yeah. I saw this great, uh, great uh, thing on Facebook, actually, a couple of days ago, where it was something about, like, you know, people say that that this confinement is giving us all uh, an opportunity to look at our thoughts and like really be with our own thoughts basically mm. right in that stillness but most people decide to learn to bake bread from scratch instead you know like yeah. everybody's baking bread from scratch <laughs> not me <laughs> i have <laughs> oh really <laughs> like but people are experimenting with things yeah. that they I mean, part of it's good, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like maybe it's something that you've always wanted to try. Yeah, exactly. So why yeah, not good. now? Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's certainly been my case. But I think, you know, there's also an there could be an element of resisting something, of resisting yeah. looking at something. Like mm. I, when I was younger, certainly, and I was keeping busy with, with things like that, uh, it was because I, I didn't want to be with my own thoughts. Yeah. I mean, now, now I spend quite a lot of time with my own thoughts. So the baking bread was for, you know, a different kind of need. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't a cover up kind of thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and like when I had kind of like a dip in my mood last week, like I'm pretty clear on why I was unhappy last week and what I was trying to avoid and, and, you know, the things I didn't want to do. And, and it makes it very obvious why focusing on the Pacific Crest Trail was so appealing because it was like I wanted to escape from the things that, you know, I had to do. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's also teaching us a lot, I think, about what what we like, what we don't like, what makes us tick, what we need in order to be happy. Like, I need a lot less structure than I thought. Hmm. I'm actually much, you know, all these years I've spent trying to put more structure into my life and trying to not just do things intuitively because then nobody knows what I'm doing. And like, you know, including in my in my business. And now I see like, that's how I'm happiest. Like, hmm. I'm happiest recording a podcast episode when I have something to say mm. instead of showing up every Monday and making myself do it. Mm. And it's just the way I'm happiest. Yeah. And so that has to be okay. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just showed me a lot about like what I need and who I am. I, 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 I realized I always thought I needed more social contact than I do. Mm. And in fact, like I don't really miss seeing people. And that's, yeah. I, I never thought I would say that. I always thought like I would miss it a little bit. Yeah. But I don't. Not yeah. not even friends. I mean, I, I just don't, I'm happy. Like mm. I'm happy to be kind of isolated. <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, which also, I mean, it's just a good thing to know about yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and because of that, we had a, a conversation in our family about when we moved to Ireland, where do we actually want to live? And mm. we all, all three of us, including my 10 year old decided that we actually want to live further away from the city than we thought. Wow. Be because all three of us want to be isolated. Yeah. We like it. Yeah. We like it this way. We get, I get annoyed by all sorts of neighbor noises yeah. now, which didn't annoy me before because everything was so loud. Yeah. It's taught us something about ourselves or allowed us to accept something about ourselves, yeah. which has actually influenced a life choice. Yeah. So I just love looking at things you know consciously really noticing yeah yeah it's it so is fascinating and that's so funny that you say that because i'm very much a hermit and i i would love to live in like a rural farmhouse where i look out all the windows and i see no other houses and i just see like green trees and like no other humanity but we've lived in this house that we're in for almost 10 years now and we don't know any of our neighbors like not even the guy next door that's like right next door but since lockdown since 
our next door neighbor and his housemate have been out in their garden all the time. Like there have been a lot more conversations over the fence. And like he and my husband, like when my husband grills, like they talk about sausages and chorizo and like, like there's been some meat exchanges over the fence. (laughs) That sounds so weird. (laughs) But like, I never had, I don't think I ever spoke to him in the previous nine years before this thing. Whereas, you know, yesterday or the other day I came home from a run and he was like, oh, thanks for that sauce you sent, you know, for the sausages. And like, we really liked it. And I was like, oh, that's great. You know. So do you like neighbors now? Like, has it changed your view about how you would want to live? Well, I certainly wouldn't want to like have like, go over to the neighbors for like a drink and like hang out and talk for hours. But like, I like the fact that we're talking over the fence now, you know? So, so it's also changed something, right? Like it's interesting. Cause then when you're choosing your next place to live, you have more information. Yeah. But I still want to live in the middle of nowhere. (laughs) Yeah. But maybe you would would want the next house to be closer than you thought. Or maybe you want to pay attention to like being part of that community. Like, I just think, interesting to notice yeah yeah yeah. definitely definitely community not as close to me as what I've got now but like definitely I'm feeling the need for community like in those two weeks when I was in the woods and doing my thing before I you know we went into lockdown there was this little village that I was camping nearby and so I was kind of going in there every day for like stuff and food and there was this pub that I was going to to get like one cooked meal from and I just really love that sense of community and seeing those people every day and like I really liked that feel of like being close to a little village where like everyone seemed to know each other and yeah yeah. that's what I want as well but that's I mean I haven't known that I want to live kind of outside of Mm. things but I definitely know that I want to be near a community or near a village like um, we watch a lot of Gilmore Girls and like I am absolutely obsessed with living in Stars Hollow (laughs) like I said to Joe to to my husband that like he has to find me a place like that in Ireland that's where I want to be an Irish Stars Hollow yeah I want an Irish Stars (laughs) Hollow Possible or not possible? Anything is possible, universe. <laughs> it, it is, it is. I was looking at um, farmhouses for sale in northern Scotland. It was it yesterday or the day before? And I was like sending all these links to Augustine. And I was like, look at this farm. <laughs> well, I think you should start looking in Ireland instead. So you just move with me. Yes. <laughs> we can be community. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So anyway. Um, so I think let's just wrap this up. Yeah. You know, with a reminder that whatever, because the, the, the title of this was Who Are You Going to Be yeah. After Lockdown? And I just, just a reminder that who you're going to be is who you are today. Yeah. Like there's not going to be some magical change in you. Yeah. Just like when I um, was pregnant with my son, I thought that once I had him, that I would magically become patient. Mm-hmm. Like that. that's the... <laughs> Like that that's the way like mothers are. And I thought that that was like a biological thing that would wow. happen to me. What is, was, is your mother really super patient? No, but oh. I just thought that I just assumed that, huh. that I would have patience with my own child. Ah. Yeah, and I did not. <laughs> and, 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 that, and that was a real shocker to me though. You know, um, I assumed an external event would make me different. Yeah, yeah. So if you're assuming that after lockdown, you will be like super productive or super fit Mm. or a super great cook or whatever it is, Mm. you're not. (laughs) Start practicing those skills today. Yeah. So (laughs) whoever you want to be after lockdown, be that person now. Yeah. And, And just start thinking about this time in history as not a parenthesis. Yeah. But just as a period of transformation. So that's Mm. not a period of in-between that's kind of cut out of history. Mm. It's a time during which things change into a new normal. Mm. And that's a totally different thing because you are changing into a new normal as well, right? And so just just pay attention to to that process for yourself. Yay! If you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We always look forward to feedback. Like, what did you get out of this episode? I really like hearing from listeners. How? What did this make you think about? What did you get out of it? What is your new perspective? Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. I was going to give you my email address, but there's something wrong with it. So just uh, PM me on any of the social media if you want to get in touch. All right. And you can email me at holly at hollywharton.com or get in touch online. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So please drop me a line. Let me know what you thought about this week's episode. You can email me at holly at hollywharton.com or find me online and get in touch there. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. It would mean the world to me, and it would also make it easier for you to get the episodes each week. Next week's episode, I don't know what that's going to be yet. It's probably going to be a solo episode, but I will be, I think, calling more people onto the show to talk about things that are of interest to me, mostly outdoorsy stuff, walking long distance trails stuff. We'll see where this goes. I'm definitely not going to be doing interviews. I don't know what I'll be doing, but I think it's going to be kind of more in-depth conversations, the kinds of things that I do with Joanna, but with other people that I know well and that I know I can have an interesting and useful conversation with. So we shall see where this goes. Uh, Remember to visit hollywharton.com forward slash 357 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you very much and have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for listening to Into the Woods with Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's episode, including links for topics that were discussed, at hollywharton.com. That's H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-R-T-O-N.com. If you'd like to connect with other listeners and get support on your journey, I would love for you to join my private community on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Holly Wharton. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash Holly Wharton. Thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you next week.